All right, so, in a bind and way behind, by myself, John Philip Abner. First we've got our cast of characters. We have Satan, the Prince of Darkness, Father of Wives, King of Hell, Overseer of Damnation. He's somewhat fed up with his job after thousands of years at it. He now mostly tries to keep the status quo instead of relishing the spread of evil. We have Susan, a government drone. She oh, I was going to read it with you. Do you want me to read it with you? Sure. And if she can be said to take pleasure in anything, it is a meaningless bureaucracy and seeing rules and ordinances carried out to the letter. Next we have Sheila, a human lawyer, genius yet completely devoid of any morality. Spunky and ambitious, she works well thinking on her feet and is not intimidated in the slightest to work for the King of Hell. And then lastly, we have Duffy, a wise old janitor. <clears throat> Scene 1. Open on a bland office with a sturdy oak door and desk in the center. Open on the desk <coughs> are various ledger books and a desktop computer. Sitting behind the desk, with his head in his hands, is the devil, who surveys the ledgers with a look of bleak resignation. Satan. Oh god, why did I ever think that would actually work? Three short crisp knocks sound from the office door. Who in hell could that be? Satan walks over to the door and opens it, revealing a tall skinny woman with a stoic face and hair pulled into a tight bun. Is this the residence, Satan, tempter of the righteous, unholy abomination, per perjurer of justice, infernal overlord, and demon supreme? Yes. I am Susan Smith of the Infernal Revenue Service, here to inform you, Satan, tempter of the righteous, unholy abomination, perjurer of justice, infernal overlord, and demon supreme, are being audited. What do you mean, audited? Well, our records show that you, Satan, tempter of the righteous, unholy abomination, perjurer of justice, infernal overlord, and demon supreme, received 9.8 million damn souls this quarter, but reported you were in the 8.9 to 9.4 million tax bracket. You couldn't possibly think we would miss something that big. Well, of course not. But you didn't account for the humans finding out about the CIA spreading crack around low-income neighborhoods. Which would qualify me as exempt for the .6 million souls under the failed business clause of 5 1500 BC. Surely you must be joking. The public couldn't care less about what their government is doing. Tell me, have they even attempted to take action or even change their perspective on anything after finding out? Well, there's a form that has been dedicated to seeking justice. You mean the paranoid basement dwellers on lizardpeopleshadowgovernment.net? Nice try, but there is no way that could possibly be considered grounds for tax deduction. But, but what about. But what about a. Uh, Don't waste your breath. We have looked over your records extensively, and there are no failures big enough to warrant a break. Fine. Now, I need you, Satan, Tim. Look, I, I know you have to use the whole title to be official and all that, but can you just, like, I don't know, abbreviate it or something? As you wish. Now, S-T-U-P-I-D. I need you, need you to initial here to acknowledge you have received the Infernal Revenue Service audit notice. I also need you, S-T-U-P-I-D, to sign here to verify that you fully understand the notice and will comply with your legal obligation to pay the amount owed by the end of the business hours today. Well, what if I can't get the souls by then? Then you, S-T-U-P-I-D, will be fined another 2.5 million souls due at the end of next quarter and be stripped of your title and powers until you settle. Office closes at 6. Have a nice day. Hold out cell phone and dials. <laughs> Sheila? Ah, oh, Lucy! Great to hear from you again. What seems to be the problem? Well, I'm in a bind. And I'm way behind. Oh? I blew more souls than I care to mention earlier this quarter, and now I don't have enough to pay death's taxes. Ah, oh, come on, Lucy. Don't tell me you're losing your touch now. Just tell me you had some startup scheme that failed or something. Should work in hell as well as it does up here. I already tried that. They didn't bite. Ah, uh, what do you know? No matter. We can find some other way around it. Tell me, have you been any, up to anything that the boys downstairs would consider charitable? Well, I do manage the Hellhound Shelter. And last month I subsidized some of the soul power it took to bring that eclipse about. Hmm, I can work with that. What about dependents? Do you have any entity that relies on you for its well-being? I mean, Zazel's been crashing at my place for a few nights after his wife kicked him, kicked him out, but surely that wouldn't be grounds for... Hmm, seize to the basic and emotional needs of domestically uh, disciplined compatriots. What was that, Lucy? 
I, w I was just thinking that there was no that way they would go for that. Of course they will! If those pencil pushers give you any trouble, you just send them right to me, and I'll give them a verbal lashing worse than any of your professionals could ever dream of. Uh, all right, I guess. How close does that put me to being back in the black? Well, looks like you would only need one more soul that you were scheduled to receive today. So if I were you, I'd get busy. Oh, thank damnation. Who to sell to, though? Uh, what about Danny DeVito? We could restore his youth. I don't know. I actually kind of prefer the mature Danny D. Mm, okay. Adam Sandler, then? We could give him a sense of humor. Do you really want to be stuck with him for all eternity? Yeah. Good point. You think we could, uh, make a deal with Trump? I mean, we probably could, but come payday, he'd just declare spiritual bankruptcy and we'd be back to square one. You're right, of course. Wait, what if we gave George Lucas one last great movie? That would be a great idea, except I'm afraid his soul isn't on the market anymore. It was included in the Disney buyout. Well, then who should we sell to? Have you considered doing it the old-fashioned way? Appearing as a snake and marketing fruit? No, 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 a contest! Ooh, I haven't done one of those in years. Do we have any prospects for me to swindle? Let's see, let's, ta let's take a look-see. We have a talented poker player who doesn't know when to walk away. An extremely attractive man who cannot stand being denied. A fiddle player who fancies himself, and I quote, the best who's ever been. Oh, whoa! Tell me more about this musician. Oh, he's just some Georgia boy with a knack of getting people's feet stomping. Hmm, what to use as incentive? I don't think it would matter much what you offered him. Just as long as you tell him you can play better than he can, he'll leap at the challenge. I'm beginning to think this might be a good day after all. I haven't got to actually perform in ages. If you hurry, you can probably catch him while he's practicing. Apparently, he normally plays by an old hickory stump most afternoon. Line goes dead. Hello? Hello, Lucy? Scene two. Satan strolls jauntily down a dirt road whistling Crossroads by Robert Johnson. Oh man, it's been way too long since I've gotten out of the office. How to make a dramatic entrance? There's no way he'll take me seriously unless I nail the first impression. Sees a figure playing the fiddle on a nearby hill. And there he is. Guess I'll go with the old materializing monologue. Can't go wrong with a classic. Satan disappears in a poof of red smoke. Scene three. The last lines of The Devil Went Down to Georgia by the Charlie Daniels Band fade out as Satan re-enters with his head slumped, looking dejected. One lousy soul. All I need is one! Just one! Is that too much to ask? Satan plops down on a park bench. An old man in a janitor's jumpsuit with the name Duffy embroidered above his left, br left breast pocket meanders into the scene, whistling nothing in particular while pushing a cart of cleaning implements. Duffy sits down next to Satan. You look like you're in a fine mood. Satan, pouting, pointedly ignores Duffy. Duffy settles into the backrest. Oh, come on now, do you good to talk about it? Satan. <laughs> Duffy. All right, then you don't gotta talk to old Duffy if you don't want you to. Recli <coughs> Duffy reclines further, pushes his cap over his eyes, and picks out the tune he had previously been whistling. Satan obviously holding back tears. It's just, I try so hard all the time, never take a day off, have to deal with every mess my incompetent underlings make, and I can't even pay my damn taxes. Duffy. Oh, come on now, it can't be all bad. What exactly do you do, sonny? I manage hell and its little subsidiaries. Used to be a little overwhelming sometimes. You have no idea. Last year, I personally had to manage my acquisitions department and PR division. I don't even know why I bother hiring minions when they can't even do the simplest tasks. Oh, I hear you, sonny. I've been head custodian for more years than I care to mention. I have more of my fair share of mooches and mischief makers. But you can't dwell on that. You gotta focus on what you love about your gig. Somehow doing the work of 200 demons every day just doesn't sound all that appealing. Oh, come now, there's got to be something you like. How about the screams of the damned? Maybe tormenting mortals on Earth? Don't even try to tell me you don't enjoy either of those. <sighs> Guess there are some perks. Oh, and it must be awful not to do anything you want. 
I can't tell you how I'd love to make it, how much I'd love to make a drummer or two burst into flame if I was in a bad mood. I'd almost forgotten about that. <laughs> Satan closes his eyes and snaps his fingers. <laughs> then a scream is heard off stage. His smile broadens and some of the stress pours out of his tense body. <sighs> That's more like it. You feeling any better now? No, yeah, strangely I actually am. Like I should prefer. You just gotta find something you love about your work. When you do, you focus on that. I mean, every job's got its downside, and there's nothing you can do about that. So don't dwell on it, and just do the best you can. You know what? You're right, Duffy. Thank you. <laughs> Duffy, you have my gratitude. If you ever need a fiendish favor, don't hesitate to call. Satan wafts off stage, whistling Stairway to Heaven by Led Zeppelin. Duffy rests his legs on the now empty bench and pulls out a sandwich out of an old timey lunch pail and with a satisfied smile takes a large bite. The end.